But right now I'm the creative person and my husband is the operations person and I'm also the admin person. So, you know, like we're at the stage where it's like, okay, we need to build a team. You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. Hey, hey guys, welcome, welcome back to the show. Today in the guest chair, we have Chantelle Powell. As a busy working mom and wife, Chantelle found herself shuttling her son Cameron between summer basketball camp and football practice. She quickly noticed that he was starting to smell like a grown man because he was sweating buckets under his armpits. And that's when her innovative mindset kicked in and she came up with the idea for her side hustle. Chantel decided to develop an all-natural deodorant for her son. And so, Play Pits, the brand, was born. Play Pits is a 100% all-natural deodorant for active kids. It's free of aluminum, parabens, synthetic fragrances, and other harsh chemicals. While it can be used on the most gentle skin types, it also packs a strong punch against odors. In today's episode, Chantel breaks down how she tested out Play Pits on family to get feedback, how customer demand led her to evolve from children's deodorant to an adult deodorant line as well, and how she did it all while side hustling. Let's get right into it. What made you decide to start side hustling? Well, I've always had an entrepreneur spirit. I've always been, a, in a way, a, a rule breaker and someone who never really believed in the whole nine to five life. Um, but, you know, with life, you kind of fall into certain areas where you have to work um, because, you know, if you're like me, you have student loans. And so, you know, you just you go to work because you have to. But you all like I've always just had the spirit to kind of be my own boss and work for myself. And so that's kind of how I got in this whole world of working for myself. And it started off with me having a side hustle of um, styling people on the side. Okay, so what was your initial career path? Was it fashion centric? Yeah, so I went to school for fashion merchandise and I went to Clark Atlanta University. Um, and my degree, I just wanted to basically, I tell people so funny, I just wanted to um, do the window displays and merchandise, the mannequins at Macy's and, you know, all oh, the big stores, right? Yes, so, they're so creative. Yep. Yeah, so I'm a creative person. And so, you know, I just wanted to make the displays and um, the mannequins look cute. But when I was in um, my junior year in college, I needed an internship. And one of my professors put me in touch with um, Tyler Perry Studios for their costume department. And so then that kind of opened a whole new world to me. And so that's how I entered the world of film and TV. Is that what you currently do? You're a film and TV stylist? Yeah, so I'm an assistant costume designer, um, and so I've been in the industry for over ten years, um, working as a you know a shopper, a costumer, and now an assistant costume designer. Interesting. This is so cool. So I didn't realize that's what you also you totally do. So I'm doing this thing now where I don't over research people. So oh, it's like okay. this surprise and delight element for me when I talk to you guys. Yeah. And that is so that is such a fun, you know, career. So then what made you decide to do this completely different world of creating a body product specifically for kids? How did that come about? Well, I came home to a smelly little boy. <laughs> Why are boys so smelly? <laughs> oh my God. I um and my son is my son Cameron, the inspiration of Play Pits. He's yes. in um, I mean, he since he was four years old, he played flag football, basketball, T ball, um, lacrosse. And so he's always been super sport um centric and super like we, you know, we're so promoting his active lifestyle, but one day at six years old, Cameron literally got in the car. And as that door swung shut, it was like his odor just hit me. And I was like, wait, you're six. Like, what just happened? Um, and he smelled horrible. And so I just refused to settle for having a smelly little boy in my house. Um, and so I, I did some research and it wasn't any natural deodorants on the market that I really was interested in that I felt like he would wear daily. Um, And then the 
other traditional deodorants on the market, they're toxic. They're horrible for you. So I didn't want to put that ingredient, um, that product on my sweet baby boy, even though he smelled like a grown man. I didn't want to use the products that grown men were using. So I just got in the kitchen and I made him a product. I love that. As, As you were doing your research, what is it about what was currently out there in the natural deodorant space that that made you that you didn't like for your own child? So it was so serious. Like you look at the packaging, you look at the, you know, everything was just so serious and so boring that I just was like, yeah, my little baby, he's not going to do this every day. And I needed a product that I would be confident that, you know, while I'm, while he's getting himself ready for school and for practice, I could be packing his lunch and I could say, get ready. And just like he brushed his teeth that he's been doing since he was two, uh, one years old, I needed to know that he was going to put on this new product every day in the natural deodorants on the market. They were, they weren't, it was nothing that was going to excite him. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make something with the, or- I, the first, um, the first fragrance I made for him was it had orange essential oils. Um, and so that was something fun and he liked it. Um, and so he then was super excited to try it because one mommy made it. Um, <laughs> so it's, you know, it's the sense of like, oh, look what my mom made. And then two, it smelled good. So he was really excited to try that. Um, and so that kind of is how that first um, that first batch was made. And then he um, he inspired me. From that point on. So how did you know how to make deodorant? I mean, (laughs) you you go from just having this idea to coming up with the formulations because it's not just, oh, I I need something to smell good. I need something that's actually a deodorant. Right, right. So it's so funny because people like people that know know the career uh, fashion stylist, costume, life, Shanta, they're so confused by that as well. Like, wait, you make people look good. How do you know how to make them smell good too? Um, But I believe in natural remedies. So my grandmother, when I was a little girl, she used to, after I would play outside or before, she would put baking soda under my arms. And so I remember that. Like I, so When he came home, I knew I could put baking soda under his arms, but I also knew that wasn't something that would last all day long. And with his super active lifestyle, I needed something that would start him from, you know, the morning, bring him home, still smelling fresh to then go to practice and come home from practice smelling good. So then I took it a step further and I knew that um, the first thing was cornstarch. So I knew cornstarch would help absorb the moisture so he wouldn't be sweaty. And then I, the first item, the the other item that I added was uh, coconut oil because that has bacteria killing properties, right? Okay. So I included that. And then that kind of, sp- I'm a researcher, I'm a Googler, I'm a YouTube watcher. So that is kind of, when I decided that this would be a business, Cameron actually, he literally came home after practice, um, well, after camp one day, basketball camp. And he was like, mom, I told everybody at camp that you made me deodorant. And so, um, can you make it for all the kids? (laughs) (laughs) So he he was your marketer. He was your marketing director. Yeah. I mean, he was, yeah, he was like going, he was the promoter marketing. I mean, he did it all. And so I was like, him, you know, no, I just made that for you. Like you're crazy. And so he looked at me with these cute little six year old eyes and he was like, but mom, you can make it for everyone. And for him, he's thinking all the kids at camp. But when he said that, I heard everyone. Right. And so I was like, Oh, Cam, (laughs) you might be on to something. So then that's when I did the additional research to figure out what was really on the market. And I didn't see anything on the market that could do it better than what I could envision at that moment. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna make this a business. Yes. And specifically designed for kids too. And I know you also, it can be used by kids at heart, but there was really nothing targeting kids and kids are smelly. (laughs) Yeah, kids are smelly. And it's so sad that people are settling for smelly kids Mm -hmm. in their home. You know, it's so common. Like you hear, especially with boys, you hear people say all the time, like, oh, boys, they smell, but why? Why are we okay with that? <laughs> so that was something I was super passionate about. Like, no, we should not we can stand do something for smelly about kids. This. Yeah, yeah. Now, what investment and materials and equipment, what were your startup costs to <laughs> get started with this? 
<laughs> a whole bunch of Amazon orders of different <laughs> ingredients and containers. My husband was sick of me. I had packages. <laughs> I bet he was. I bet he was. <laughs> when I tell you, I had, I mean, the cost, I can't even remember. I mean, I know the initial, it started out very small. Mm-hmm. You know, it started out maybe with $100. And then, you know, with that, you, you test things out and you're like, no, I don't want to use that. And then, I mean, it, it definitely was a lot of money. That first, um, it took me nine months to develop play fits, um, this, as far as like formulating it. It took me nine months. And when I say formulating it, I mean, I would make it, let people try it. So um, my family and friends were my guinea pigs. So I tell people all the time, it's not tested on animals, but it's definitely tested on all of my family and friends. <laughs> so I started off with just giving it to them and saying, hey, let me know how this works out for you. And, you know, some some formulas failed them and they would call me like, girl, I smell horrible today at work. And I'm like, all right, I'm sorry. I'll make something else. So the startup cost was Mm, it was hundreds of dollars of just, you know, trying different ingredients. And did you share the vision with your husband? You mentioned that he was <laughs> just sick of you, but I, I know he wasn't actually sick of you. But when you decided to take this on, was it all hands on deck, like family endeavor, or was it still kind of a side passion that you were testing out? I mean, so yeah, I definitely, um, I definitely shared with him. And I think he thought, I think he thought at first it was like, oh, that's cute. So, you know, I don't think like looking back now, like all that we've been able to do in a year and a half, he definitely looks at it. He's like, oh, damn, I didn't know. (laughs) You know, it would roll out into something so big Mm -hmm. because I definitely think at first it was so odd. It was so different, you know, in a world where everybody's making hair products and you know, different, like more common things, this deodorant, like it was like, girl, what you going to do? What? Oh, okay. That's cute. All right. Well, let me know, you know, (laughs) if you need a little help, but it really, I don't think he envisioned it being what I thought it could be in the beginning, but he supported it, you know, every step of the way, but he definitely, you know, I don't, I don't think that he would think that hours of his days would be fulfilling hundreds of orders like it is now. And what, how long did it take you to go from the initial testing phase to have your, your MVP, like that, that product that you were comfortable putting for sale? So it's, it took nine months. I tell people all the time, it was like a baby. Um, you know, I have two boys. So the frequent, the, the question that's always asked to us is like, when are you having a girl or when are you having a baby? Another bit. Ba- Play piss is my other baby. And it took me <laughs> nine months. It took us nine months to develop it. Um, and so, you know, you have to be patient with a product like this. This was something that, Um, It doesn't, you know, with the deodorant, of course, you want it to work for everyone, but it's people's bodies are different. So you I had to find people that had sensitivities to certain ingredients and test things on them and, you know, have people that really nothing works for them and test things on them. So that game of figuring out the testing process, it takes a long time. And then the reformulating that that takes a, a long time as well. So when at what stage? did you start to market and really focus on the sales now? So after that nine months, once I got the formula like down, once I, once I was able to get a formula that was working for pretty much everybody that had started from the beginning to, to the end, to that end of the nine months, I sent the product over to a lab and um, just because I wanted everything to be verified, you know, I'm not a chemist, right? So I'm like, let me make sure I'm not putting, you know, wrong ingredients or wrong um, measurements in the, into this product. So I sent it over to get verified and the head chemist, she contacted me and she wanted to have a call with her team. And so I took the call and I said, you know, I, I'm looking forward to you all's feedback. And she said, I have to ask, what is your background? And I said, oh, I'm, (laughs) you know, I'm just a wardrobe stylist. uh, You know, I work in film and TV, a costume um, assistant. And she said, this is the best formula I've ever seen. And 
when she said that, and, she, and they sell the company that I work with, they sold an actual melt and pour deodorant. Um, and she said, this is better than our formula. Of course, we had an NDA. So, you know, she couldn't, we had non disclosure, we had everything already signed. But when she said that, that gave me the confidence to say, okay, this is ready for the market. Like when this professional was able to give that type of feedback, that's when I said, all right, so now I'm ready to launch it. Um, but while all while I was developing, I was branding it on the in the background, right? So I was formulating it, but I was also working on the name. I was working on the logo. I knew what I wanted to, it to feel like. I knew what I wanted it to smell like. Um, and once I got that down, I was able to launch it. So we launched March 31st. Of tw- 2018. 2018. And what did that launch mm-hmm. look like? What, what does it mean to launch Play Pits? So that launch started off, it was actually, um, we did a soft launch. So we had a, a very intimate launch at the Spice Suite in D.C., Washington, D.C. And so we invited some um, local moms, other business owners to come and kind of preview it and see what it looked like. They were able to purchase it there. And then when we did our large launch, that is when we opened up our website um, for orders. And then we had we hosted an Easter egg hunt, which is something that I did every year. Um, but this Easter egg hunt was hosted and produced sponsored by play pits. And so we had a table. And of course, in the beginning, it was only, you know, family, friends, and I did it in partnership with this other uh, blogger. So we basically, that's what our launch looked like. It was very small, very cute. Um, and the majority of our customers in the beginning were all people we knew. What was it like? So you launched at the Spice Suite. What was it like when you were introducing and putting it in front of new people? What was the response like? Did you immediately have to up your inventory goals or, you know, how did that work? In the beginning, it was it was something people were really excited about. So we we get in the beginning, it was very mixed, like People were excited about it if you knew that children needed deodorant, right? So if you had a kid and you were like, oh my God, I've been using Dove on my daughter, like, of course I'm buying this. People were like, yeah, let me get one. But then you had people that really didn't understand it. Like, hold up, what, kids need deodorant? You know, I didn't, like, people don't really think kids need deodorant at a certain age. So it was mixed. And it's kind of still mixed. Like, people are still a little like, huh, I don't get it. But then the people that understand, they're like, oh yeah, I'm grabbing five of them for the whole family. So that's kind of how we were able to, you know, grow is by the people that got it in the beginning and then spread the word to their friends and family. And then that's when we were like, okay, we need to take this up a notch. Um, So at that point, we, we started off with Amazon in, uh, ingredients. And now we have to go with a bulk, <laughs> you know, a company that sells in bulk, okay. and 50 pound bags and, you know, a hundred. So yeah, things are definitely different than the Amazon days. You bring up an interesting point, which is it is tough when you're both teaching your customer how to use your product or teaching them about the, the purpose of it and also trying to sell the product. That is not easy. But then once you've identified the kind of key characteristics, your your ideal customer, how have you gone about finding more of those people? Are you working with athletic teams or anything like that? So actually, we um, one thing we did a large amount of it was we were at any, you know, all events that we knew family Families would be there. Moms would be there. Um, That's kind of how we started with, you know, any expo, any convention that was affordable for us because expos and conventions are super expensive. And my deodorant is only ten dollars, ten to eleven dollars. So if the fee is five hundred dollars, that's 50 deodorants I have to sell in order to just make my money back. Right. And so when you're thinking about that, it's like, huh. That's a lot of product you just giving away just to be in the building. But what we were able to do there is kind of slowly build our customer base. And from that point, 
we were able to kind of know where our customers would be. And now recently we just launched a play program where we're partnering with sports organizations in order for them to raise money for their organizations. You have gone beyond the days of ordering stuff on Amazon piecemeal. Mm -hmm. Have you also gone beyond manufacturing and packaging these yourself? Are you at the level where you're outsourcing it or is it still an in-house job? So we're still doing everything in-house. We're still making, producing, manufacturing, shipping, everything ourselves. And so we're at the process. We're literally at the cusp of that and then what's next and figuring out what direction we want to go into. Um, But we definitely need to make a decision, right? So we're exploring... um, if we want to manufacture it ourselves as far as getting a warehouse and kind of um, just building our inventory of equipment to make it um, and just hiring people, or if we want to send it out for a co-packer to do everything for us. And what has been the most challenging aspect of this? After you launched, was there anything that just surprised you about the entire process? Well, I think the main thing that has been the challenge is the educational portion. Um, You know, it's really hard to kind of break brand loyalty. And regardless of you telling someone, hey, this product has chemicals that could lead to cancer, uh, like aluminum. So you should try our product. People have been using, let's say, Dove for 30 years. And they are loyal to Dove. And regardless of you telling them, hey, I have a product that is safer, that's effective, and that smells amazing, they, they're they a little skeptical. You know, so that whole educational piece is really, um, it really has been a challenge for, for us to kind of convert people. But once we convert people, they're hooked. And it's and that's the most rewarding people. And I tell, you know, because we're not really going after people who kind of we're going after people who don't know why they should use natural deodorants, because my mission is to educate our community um, as well as, you know, provide a safe and effective product. But I want to reach people who don't know the harms of antiperspirants. And so when you tackle a task like that, you you're going to it's going to be a challenge. And but what I've been able to do is kind of educate people is slowly and, you know, it, it it's slow, but it's possible. Um, and that's another reason why we tackle the children, because when you educate kids, they they're more inclined to learn and say, oh, OK, well, I want this. Whereas adults are a little more stubborn and stuck in their ways. So we go after the kids and then the adults come. When you see kids too doing something, it's like, well, what, what's that? What are you using in the locker right. room? <laughs> right. So how are you juggling all of this? Um, does your work require you to travel? Like, how are you able to ensure yeah, you're making enough orders to meet or, uh, purchase demands while also still having your full-time job? In an industry that's very freelance based. Um, so I could work, for instance, October to May of this past year, I worked for seven months straight and I was in a whole nother state as my family. So the business was ran out of Washington, D.C., Maryland area, and I was in Atlanta, Georgia. And so it was crazy, but we were able to make it. Um, My husband did all the production as far as fulfilling orders and making the product while I handled all the admin work. Um, and then, so yeah, it, it's a, it's a struggle to keep the balance, but it's, you know, it's possible with your village. So I'm fortunate to have family and friends that chip in and help and devote their time to us to help make it possible. But it's, it's definitely a challenge, but I'm very fortunate that I don't have a traditional nine to five that I have to work every day. Speaking of money and full-time jobs and kind of thinking of that next move and if you are going to take it full-time. I know that not everyone makes money when they first start their side hustle. I certainly didn't. And, you know, it was it was money, but it wasn't enough to like cover my bills and say, oh, I'm ready to quit. I really had to strategize. So what has been your experience? I've been very fortunate that Play Pits has, I, I tell people, Play Pits has funded itself since the first 30 days of business. So meaning that initial, you know, nine months into getting it out there, developing it and all of that. Of course, I was putting 
any extra money I had personally from my job into it, I was then able to, once we launched and once our family and friends were buying the product, I was able to pour all the money back into it. And so even now, um, we, we, any dollar we make, we put right back into the business. And so financially, of course, one day soon, hopefully within the next two years, I will be full-time play fits um, and then transition my husband to full-time play fits. That's the ultimate goal. But I've been able to make money. So when I think about like profit, we probably definitely would be profitable by now, but I put all money back into it. And so, you know, whether it's me needing new equipment or me buying larger bulk items, it's like, oh, I had the money. Let's just do it to save money on the back end. So we're, we're doing pretty good financially as far as making money. Um, but I don't see any of the money to really say like, oh, we balling out. Like, no, I don't see it. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not seeing any of it. Um, but we, you know, we're able to definitely fund the business um, pretty, you know, pretty well with just the money that we're able to make online and at pop-ups and stuff. So knowing what you know now and just all the things you've been able to glean from fellow entrepreneurs, what would you say your goal is to get to that level where you're able to go full time? So is it to get into um, physical stores, to major, major brand retailers? What are you thinking on that front? Um, so the goal, I mean, the ultimate goal is definitely to be in all the big box stores, um, all the retailers. My ultimate goal is like a target. Um, because I'm definitely a Target mom. So I want to see Play Pits on the shelves at Target. And I think that um, my audience is, does as well. We did a we did a little post um, just trying to see what people, you know, where people saw Play Pits. Um, and they definitely think Target would be a good match. And so I think ideally the next thing would be just getting it to a point where we could do both. Like right? we could do the retail route where we get a huge retailer or really just marketing it so we get more orders online in order to sustain me being able to tra- transition to full-time um, play pits. So it's, it's kind of like two two ways um, that we could go. But ultimately, yes, I want to be in all of the stores. I want to be in the CVSs. I want to be, I want to be wherever our parents need to go grab deodorant for their sales and their families. Yes. And have you thought about what that looks like? So what steps do you want to take to get there? And I'm speaking for all of us here, right? Because we all have myself included goals of, okay, I want to do this. You know, I want to be Oprah. I want to have my own TV show. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now what steps has Chantel taken to get into to Target? So the first step that, and actually I, I did some of those today, um, interviewing a team, like getting some support because, um, you, you know, you can't do a lot when you, you're the creative, like I'm more of the creative person, but right now I'm the creative person and my husband is the operations person and I'm also the admin person. So, you know, like we're at the stage where it's like, okay, we need to build a team. Um, because we wouldn't be able to handle a big box order right now because we don't have a team in place because it's just us. Um, so that's the, that's like the next thing that we're actually in the works of doing. And then once we do that, figuring out that next step, what I was saying is, should we manufacture it ourselves or should we outsource that? Um, and then from that point, that's kind of how we're figuring out, okay, so the ultimate goal is to be in all the stores, but how are we going to get there? We need a team. We need people in place in order to support our customers and also to support these businesses that um, will have these accounts with us. And then also having a facility to warehouse all of this, you know, all this product. I like it. I like that you're thinking through all of that and I can see it. I can't wait to see the next level. So before we get into the lightning round, I'm curious. I don't I haven't interviewed a lot of brands that are focused solely on children. And I'm curious, how do you view your client base, your customer base as they age up? Is it something where you want to kind of create products that go with them into adulthood or is it, you know what, this is for a specific niche and we're going to stick with that. Interesting is Playpen started off with just the kids, right? Like Cameron had this idea. We kind of ran with that. 
But what we noticed really soon, like literally within a four month period, parents would buy it and they would use it themselves. And they would then place another order and say, oh, I never even gave that to Johnny. I mean, I loved it so much that now I'm going to order some more for him to use. And so what we did there was we were able to see like, okay, not only do kids need it, but adults want a, a natural deodorant as well that's effective. And we didn't know at the time that we were creating a product that people come to us and they say all the time, I can't use no deodorant but play pits. So this past um, Christmas, we did a collaboration with um, Zen Najjar. And I, I know you're yes, familiar she's with on the Nikki show. from Zen yes. Najjar. Yes. Yes. So she's she's like a mentor to me. And so we decided to do a collaboration where we infused her fragrance into my deodorant for a Christmas gift to my parents. It was just a Christmas gift. It was like, hey, guys, I know y'all been asking Merry Christmas. And literally it blew up like people loved it to the point where by. So that was December. By February, they were like, hey, I'm out of King. I'm out of Empress. Um, how can I order it again? And we were like, nah, that was just a, I know I was, I was like, that was just a one time, that was a one time thing, guys. I just Merry Christmas, but, uh, we're going to keep moving with these adults, with the kids. And they were like, uh, uh-uh. um, I mean, to this day, like in my DMs, emails, comments, people are like, where is the adult deodorant? So what we've decided is that we're rolling out Play Pits adults this fall. Um, and so that kind of was one of those things that was organic that just happened, but we saw the demand was there because even though there's a good amount of natural deodorants on the market for adults, they're not effective. Um, so natural deodorants have a horrible rap and that's why people come to us and they're like, oh, I've tried, right. I've tried this <laughs> they're like that, but, you uh, know. <laughs> yeah, but by 12 o'clock I smell like an onion and I'm like, well, no, you're actually still going to smell amazing. Just give us a try. And once they try it, they're like in mm-hmm. love. Um, and so we're, we're able to now do play pits adults. And so we're rolling it out this fall. Um, mid, in, 2000, in 2020, we're going to do Play Pits Teens. Um, so our mission is to basically provide an effective, safe, and fun product for the entire family. So we want to stay with the kids. We want you know, that Play Pits kids to grow into Play Pits teens to then grow into Play Pits adults. Um, and eventually we'll have other products. Um, and so we just want to be the product brand for families. And so that's now in our mission is really to be family focused um, because I'm a I'm a I'm a mom and, you know, I have three kids and we are very I'm, I'm really into natural, you know, products. And so when I think about my family, I have a teenage daughter that's 15 and I have a husband who, you know, doesn't really didn't know about natural deodorant before I launched this. And so I see how my how I've been able to impact my family through this product. And I've seen what I've been able to do to my customers, families and convert them and get them to trust our product and really rely on our product. So I want to provide a product that's for everyone. That is exciting. And now I just looked on your Instagram and yes, I want to try Empress and King. So (laughs) we got to get you some. So now let's jump into the lightning round you know the deal you just answer the very first thing that comes to mind are you ready yes number one what is a resource that has helped you in your side hustle that you can share with the side hustle pro audience i believe in fiverr because you can go and get fabulous work for five dollars or a little more so you can get all your work done for the low. All right. Fiverr, you guys. Number two, what's been the best business book or live event that you've read or attended this year? A book that I love is Big Magic. It's not really a business book, but it's more about creativity. And I I, I think it's really important um, to read it because you kind of learn about these ideas that you have and what to do with mm. them. All righty. Number three, who is a Black woman side hustler that motivates you to keep going and why? Nikki from Zen the Jar. That's my girl. <laughs> and she motivates me. She <laughs> motivates me because I can call her when I'm having crazy 
issues and uh, shipping issues or customer service issues. And I'm able to kind of talk, talk them through with her and she's able to kind of, you know, talk me through her experiences and make me laugh and kind of, you know, let me know like, girl, it's all right. Like you, this, this is a good thing. These are good problems. Your star is rising. That's the one thing she tells me all the time. My star is rising when I come to her with all these issues. I love it. Your star is rising. Um, Number four, what is a personal habit that you think helps you in your side hustle? I'm surrounded by my family. I'm someone who I, I do, um, I host family dinners, I host family functions. And I think that kind of helps keep me centered and keep me happy um, and keeps me energized to be able to pour so much of my energy into others. And finally, number five, what is your parting advice for fellow side hustlers who may be stuck or discouraged? I recommend that you just do it. I know that as a perfectionist, I'm someone who I get stuck in my own head. Um, and I could have an idea and kind of feel like it's not ready because it's not perfect. But I would just recommend that you just figure out how to make it happen and just set your deadline of when you need to launch it and just do it and then make corrections along the way. But don't get stuck in your head. And yeah, just do it. Go for it. You got it, sis. So key. All righty. So where can people connect with you and play pits after this episode? on Instagram and follow us at Play Pits. Um, you can also visit our website, www.playpits.com. And if you want to talk to me, you can follow me on social at Shanta Love Styling on Instagram. All right. So there you have it, you guys. Thank you so much for being in the guest chair. And you guys can hear this episode and also see all the show notes that Chantel mentioned at sidehustlepro.co slash play pits. And there you have it. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other side hustlers just like you to find the show. And if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Side Hustle Pro. Plus, sign up for my six-foot Saturday newsletter at sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter. When you sign up, you'll receive weekly nuggets from me, including what I'm up to, personal lessons, and my business tip of the week. Again, that's sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter to sign up. Talk to you soon.